welcome back to my channel. Hello if you're new here. I don't know if you guys are gonna like this. Whoa. Ooh, okay, I don't know if you guys are gonna like this setup. My camera, I mean my light just like fell for no reason. So we have cheesecake and ice cream because I really wanted to mix them together. I thought that sounded so freaking good. We got chips, we got salsa, we have a burrito, we have rice, we have beans. Oh my God, y'all, I'm getting scared. Oh my God, I feel like the world is trying to tell me not to do this story. Hold on. Okay. Well, I'm starving, and that was scary. Oh my god, y'all, it's doing it again! I don't understand what's happening! Right, I feel like that's really tight. If that falls down, that's gonna be scary. All right, Whew, I'm already getting hot in here. Let's go ahead and start biting into things. I feel like I'm very low, so it's gonna be really hard for me to eat like this. Okay, let's just go ahead and try. Oh my god, I love... Mm. That was so good. Oh, these are nachos. I'm gonna go ahead and move this ice cream for now. talking about let's try this taco i'm all over the place i'm so hungry i've been waiting all day for this uh, mm. my son before anyone comes for me is at his noni's house his grandma so no one come for me all right so, I was reading Facebook the other day, and my grandma has this, like, huge fear of the exorcist. Like, it scarred her as a child. She's, like, a devote, divert, devote, whatever the word is, Catholic, like, extreme. And so, She really believes you know everything that happened which i do too like the real story i know i'm gonna say i'm eating like crazy but i'm starving okay she believes in that kind of stuff and i was like you know what emily rose isn't the real person that the story is based off of um it's actually based off annalise michelle and the true story is way scarier than the movie way scarier than hollywood could have ever portrayed it and you'll hear that being said so many times oh, this taco is so good i love the white cheese that they put on there mm. so these are nachos nachos with um i gotta stress some of these nachos real quick and then we'll get into the story of annalise michelle the actual exorcist um i don't know how to say it okay this is sour cream and guacamole on here i love when my chips are soggy i just feel like that's the best thing in the whole world mm. that was good mm. i wish i had jalapenos on it I have some, I might go grab them. It's so good. Mmm. I love napkins, so I'm probably gonna be licking my fingers a lot. I'm sorry if that grosses you out. I don't care when people do it, but apparently people do are bothered by it. Okay, so. Annalise had two parents that still were married still living together at the time that these things started happening she was 16 years old at the beginning of this story and she had a boyfriend named Peter who never left her side until the very end but he never gave up on her he never lost faith ladies if your boyfriend or husband can't stay with you through your exorcisms they don't deserve you. Mm, I love burritos. Oh, good, this beef. They didn't, like, specify. I didn't tell them I wanted chicken, beef, or bean, and I'm glad they picked beef because that's my favorite. Mmm. 
This is so good. So her parents described her as being a very um, kind person, very religious, very giving, thoughtful, just all around a really good person. Someone that you wanted to be friends with. And that's who she was when she was younger. And so when things started happening, uh, it was very stressful for everyone and kind of shocking because she was such a good person and she wanted to grow up and be um, like a teacher of religion, like being Christian or Catholic. Like she wanted to teach that. She wanted to be someone that people looked up to and to help people with like their relationship with God. Oh my God, I'm burping, sorry. Mm. So in 1968, she had her first seizure. And obviously her parents are gonna be worried. You've gone your whole life without having seizures and now all of a sudden, why are you having a seizure? Does that make any sense? They took her to the hospital. She was treated there. They thought everything was gonna be fine. During her stay, she decided to continue working on being a good Christian, a good Catholic, and learning more so in the future that she could help others. And like that, that was her goal. During the seizure, she lost consciousness. She felt like pressure on her chest, like somebody was holding her down. It was very, very weird. And she kind of just woke up and then all of a sudden she's in the hospital and it's like, what is going on? And the doctors really thought that towards like the end of her treatment, like she's getting better. Maybe this is a freak accident. Maybe she has epilepsy. Like we'll figure it out. We'll keep a close eye on her. We'll figure out what's wrong with her. And so she went home after this because obviously the doctors are thinking, oh, she's fine. Stuff everywhere. So things are pretty like chill for the most part over the next like I guess was it a year? Yeah, the next year. It was kind of chill. Everything was kind of cool. Um she had another seizure. So now people are, you know, they're getting kind of concerned. Why is this happening again? Why is she having seizures? What is like causing these seizures to happen? What is going on with her? And so um, her family doctor, she went to her family doctor. He's like, you know, maybe she should go see a neurologist. She goes to see a neurologist. She gets a brain scan. They're thinking maybe it's epilepsy. They give her epilept, what is it called? Epilepsy medication and anti-convulsion medication. Mm. If you see me look down, or if I forget to edit the, those parts out, I've watched so many videos and read so much. I know the whole story. I don't want to get the years wrong though or numbers because there's some numbers of things in here. I don't want to get them wrong. So if I look down, that's why I'm looking down. I'm sorry. I'm keeping my phone right here. <laughs> mm. So in 1972, she had two more seizures. They upped her medication and were hoping that they would have it under control. You know, figure out what is wrong with this poor girl. Like no one wants her to be afraid to live a normal life and to be having seizures and like could you imagine that would be so stressful not to know when another one's gonna come mm. i'm so glad i'm so glad Jaylen, did you hear something just now i'm asking you when i'm editing i'm really like kind of nervous because that light was dropping like 10 times it was so creepy Oh my god. Okay, so then 1973, it went from being like a medical issue to a demonic issue. And, mmm. This is how yummy that looks. It's so good. I wish I had more tomato though. Okay, so. Imagine one night you're a mom or a sibling or whatever you are think of a friend whatever it may be think of someone you care about they're sitting next to you and all of a sudden you look at their hands and they're like twice the size that their hands are supposed to be would you not be like shook <laughs> so her mom pointed it out to her and was like what the heck is happening like your hands are twice the size that they're supposed to be. More hands to hold your hand with, mother. Just kidding. That wasn't even funny. Uh, this was her exact quote. I have black hands. Forgive me, my savior. And they were thinking that maybe it was like her acknowledging the darkness inside of her or something. Very weird, very cryptic. Um, kind of weird, right? So later on, weird things just kept happening. Um, 
her, like she told her parents that she heard like banging and knocking upstairs or just around the house and that she, it really scared her. And then the sisters, her sister said they heard it too. But the parents didn't. She said she also heard voices condemning her to hell. Um, she also heard voices in general and then verses, verses, voices condemning her to hell. One night, she was staring at a Virgin Mary on the wall. And her mom said that she literally saw her eyes be just completely solid black. Completely black staring at the Virgin Mary. Is that not scary? I'm really scared right now. I'm going to open this door. Hold on. Y'all, I'm actually like a little scared. Like my, my camera has overheated twice now since we've been filming and I'm what, 10 minutes into the video, not even. And my light dropped in the beginning like a ton of times. Creepy. I almost want to just change the topic, but I'm going to finish the story. All right. So obviously you're a young girl. You're supposed to be having fun, living a good life, like having a good time. And this girl is being tortured, okay? And so, she becomes very depressed and sad, obviously. I would too. This isn't what she wants to be doing with her time. She wants to be happy. And things just kept getting worse. She started seeing demons on her walls, in her mind. She was having night terrors. They would talk to her. There was a horrible smell in the house that everyone said that they smelled. And she was just very scared. Her mother and other people around her reported that she would be praying and be thrown down to the ground in an unhuman way. Not like a human throwing themselves down, but like something throwing them down. The one she would see on her wall would have seven horns and seven crowns. Just really creepy stuff. Guys, I'm just getting a really bad like vibe from talking about this. I hate to do this, but... I'm just going to end it really really quickly and like continue eating and we'll talk about something else. Um, basically, this kept happening. She had 67 exorcisms. The priest literally exercised her 67 times and the demons like announced themselves immediately. It was very scary and weird because that's not common. And she would speak in other languages. There's um, audio tapes of it all over YouTube. And it just got really crazy and she ended up passing away her cause of death was malnutrition and dehydration she was like 63 pounds when she died um it's just a really sad story and the priest and her parents all got six months in jail and three years probation so you can look up the rest of the research let's just talk about something else i'm getting very bad vibes i feel very not good right now um i'm really sorry but let's just Let's talk about something else. I'm really sorry. So let's talk about my horrible experience today at the dentist. Hmm. So I don't know if you watched my my um like story time. Oh, it's sorry, ringing. You might hear it. I'm sorry. And I opened that door. She probably hear my ear really sorry anyway I don't know if you watched my video on my horrible experience with my son's dentist where she basically said he was born with no enamel and has to have all his teeth capped I'm really upset about it I burst into tears when they told me this let's try to get some sweets all right I brought this plate so I can mix them together Ooh. I'm gonna let ice cream sit here so we get nice and like you know uh liquidy So, the dentist before told us my teeth need, or my, my son's teeth need to be capped. He just has bad teeth from genetics. It sucks, but it's gonna be okay. And I'm like, oh man, really? This sucks. I burst into tears. I was very upset about it. And he has to be put under general anesthesia in order to have this done. So I was like, if my child's gonna have to be put to sleep, to do a certain like procedure I guess um I want a second opinion before I do this and I believe the dentist is right but in order for me to be like comfortable doing this which I'm still not gonna be comfortable but more comfortable doing this I need someone to say like this has to be done 
So, I called around and I found this dentist. They didn't have a lot of reviews, but they didn't have any negative things, so. Mm, which I'm gonna have to leave one. Mm, this is so good. Y'all see that? It's so yummy. Anyway. Mm, it's so good. So, we, first of all, my husband loves to sleep out on his days off. So she has to wake up really early in the days that he works. And he works long hours. So I get it. I hate it, but I get it. And so I had to wake him up early, which was a hassle. I wake him up. I wake my son up. We're doing good. Well, actually, I didn't wake my son up this morning. Usually he sleeps in forever. And the one morning I was going to wake up, take a shower, and relax alone, he wakes up. Which is fine. Like, it was really fun to hang out with him really early because usually he doesn't wake up that early. But it's just funny. Like, the one time. <laughs> Every other day I have nothing else to do. And he will sleep in forever. Anyway. I'm getting the kids ready. My husband and my actual kid. And we're about to go. Everything's fine. I put in the GPS how to get there. And the whole... Who's texting me? The whole way there, there's horrible construction traffic. I was so pissed. I thought we were going to be late. And there was just all these signs that, like, this wasn't a good place to go to, kind of. Like, I feel like the world was telling me that this wasn't where I was supposed to take my son. You know what? I was like, fuck the world. We're going. And we get there. After driving for 30 minutes to get there. And the outside, I I really judge like dentist offices based off how the, um, the lobby looks and how the outside of it looks. Because in my personal experience, when I've gone to places like the place I took my son today, those are the places that have screwed me over. Those are the places that have lied to me. And I would rather go somewhere that looks fancy. Because um, I feel like most of the time those people, it's just different. And you can disagree with me, but that's just my opinion. Um, I see the outside. I already have bad vibes. I'm like, mm, I don't know about this place. I go inside. I check my son in. I start filling out the paperwork. And this lady comes. You know how they call you back? The lady comes to the door and they're saying, like, Will, or whoever. Well, she walks out and is super rude. She's like, Will Johnson? Just rude. And then me and my husband and my son walk up to her. And you know what she says? We have a one parent policy. And I was like, my son's not getting his teeth cleaned or anything. I just need a second opinion. Like, my husband really can't come back here. And she was like, no. You guys, I needed him. I needed my husband. This was so stressful for me. I've had anxiety about this for the last three days. Like, I really needed my husband to be there. And she refused to let him back there. And I was like, you know what? This is their policy. Whatever. No, no. That gave me really bad vibes. My adult dentist will let my husband and child come back. And you're telling me this ch children's dentist doesn't let a two parents come back? So. I don't even know why she called us back because she didn't take us to a room. She took us to a bench right behind the door where you go back, you know, to the office or whatever. And she sat us there and was asking all these questions. And I answered, and you can tell I'm really upset because this is just, I'm very distraught about this whole situation. Um, my son, Will, starts getting upset because he's not even two yet. And she wants us to sit on this random bench, not even in a room. And he's just like stuck sitting there. Like obviously he wants to get up and play and do things. 
And so he gets up and wants to play. I'm trying to calm him down. I'm trying to stop him, but he doesn't want to be stopped. Terrible freaking twos. And this bitch has the audacity to say to me, maybe you'd be better off sitting in the waiting room so your husband can help you. Maybe you could let my fucking husband come back here, asshole. I was pissed. Because all I wanted my husband to go back there for was, first of all, it's his child. We both deserve to be able to listen to what the dentist has to say about his teeth, especially when it's critical. And you're going to tell him he can't go back there? What? It really pissed me the fuck off. I couldn't believe it. And so, I was like, you're right. I will go back to the waiting room. So I went back to the waiting room. I walked up to the front desk and I was like I just had a really bad experience and I'm canceling my appointment I don't want to be here and she's like why and I was like this is just not somewhere I want to take my child I'm leaving and I left now I should have taken the paperwork that I filled out which is annoying now that I have my information I'm so upset I was already distraught and you're going to tell me that my husband can't come back there. It's his kid too and he deserves to hear what's going on. And it just really makes me mad. Do you guys see this hole in our blinds? That makes me mad too. I hate that. Did you realize that before I said it? Let me know. <laughs> I kind of want a little more but I'm so full guys. <sighs> Alright guys, it's been about 10 minutes that I've been sitting here trying to figure out if I could eat more. And I'm very full. I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> so full but thank you guys so much for being here and so much for watching and i love all of you and i hope to see you in the next video i'm really sorry i can't finish the story but just give me really bad vibes um so yeah i'll see you guys later bye